Hi witches! Um, I want to start today's video off by extending a super warm welcome to the amazing patrons who joined my Patreon in the past week. So a huge, huge thank you to Derek, Kayla, Lisa, Patrick, Meredith, and Anna. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, if, to, if you guys like today's topic, I'll be hosting a live uh, patron-only full moon ritual um, over on Patreon on Tuesday the 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and then if you can't join us then, I post the replay almost immediately afterwards. It takes like 10 minutes just to like load and then I have to like do some funky stuff, but that's not something that you're concerned about. Um, but um, as always, links are down below and let's just dive into today's topic, the full strawberry moon. Yay! So this year, June's full moon falls on Tuesday, June 14th. It is a super moon, and what that means to us as witches um, is that energetically our workings might be a little bit more potent, a little bit more powerful. Now, astronomically speaking, like in terms of space, um, what it really means is that the moon's orbit, it's not exactly a circle. It's kind of an oval. So sometimes the moon is slightly closer to the Earth, and sometimes it's slightly farther away. So when it is away from the Earth, that's called apogee, apogee away. Perigee is when it's closer and that's when we have a super moon. So the moon's gonna look super big, super bright, super beautiful on Tuesday. I hope you guys get to enjoy it. Um, I believe for me it's going to peak at like 8 a.m. so I'm not exactly going to be able to see it but I am going just to take a few moments of like self-reflection to kind of stand there um, like you know as I'm getting ready for the morning. This full moon is in the fiery sign of Sagittarius bringing a heat and a passion uh, to the workings we are do doing during this lunar event so if you are doing anything kind of spicy or maybe um, related to like love or fertility we'll get into that but this might be a good moon for it as we are getting closer and closer to the summer solstice yay um anyways some other names you might have heard this moon go by include the strong sun moon the lover's moon the honeymoon um which actually is like a historical thing um june was like traditionally when people got married um so that might be like why we call like the vacation and celebration of like our marriage the honeymoon anyways um it also is referred to as the mead moon, the um, hot weather moon, the rose moon, and the planting moon. So if you are looking to decorate your altar or your sacred space to celebrate the specific moon, um, you might want to incorporate colors like gold, yellow, um, red, pink, orange, anything associated with like fire, uh, with passion, with kind of like like late spring, early summer, anything that reflects the season and the colors around you. So if you see maybe something blooming outside, you might be inspired by those colors. You might be able to go and harvest some of that and actually incorporate it on your altar. Um, so I encourage you guys to be creative as always. Um, some crystals that are associated with this um, include citrine, topaz, agate. I'm also around this time very much connected with like tiger's eye, but that might just be something personal. I don't know if anyone else just like feels that call, um, but any stones that you really associate with like heat, love, the sun, um, you know, carnelian might be a good one as well. Um, anything that you would have used during Beltane and might be using during Letha, I would say definitely feel free to use on your altar or anything you feel called to. But specifically those kind of fiery, those passionate, energetic, um, or like energy lending stones might be something that you want to incorporate. Being the strawberry moon, um, definitely using strawberries in your working might be something that you want to look into, as well as aromatic herbs or kind of like spicy herbs, um, such as cinnamon, pepper, cloves, basil, um, mint. There is a huge uh, importance of mugwort around this time, so if you are into having some like funky dreams, maybe, um, doing a mugwort incense or using it in um, some sort of working that you're doing, um, as well as stuff like mosses, skull cap. Um, I just really like to use the plants that are in season right now. So whatever is blooming for you, it's really hard for me to give like general recommendations, I feel, because like I uh, like we had frost warnings until, you know, like May here in Pennsylvania, but I know in Florida it was like 90 degrees. So you guys might have different things in season. Um, so again, be inspired by the planet around you. That is awesome. And and I just, I love the unique ways that people um, like come together to like celebrate these different events because everyone's altars or like spaces look so different. Um, and I think that's really awesome and like really beautiful. And I, uh, I just, I just love witchcraft, you guys, I'm sorry. Now in terms of energy that this moon is going to contribute to your working or workings that might be great to do during this moon are workings centered around positivity, happiness, joy, curiosity, um, being open to the gifts of the universe as well well as prosperity and abundance, um, anything like that. So 
Um, as witches, and this is kind of the reason that I'm doing this series, I see a lot of information about like the energies of the moon and what it might mean for you and your zodiac sign, which is amazing. I love those videos. Like, honestly, I watch like all of them. They're so cool. And they also like are low key teaching me astrology, which I really like just to like absorb this knowledge. Um, but I don't often see a lot of videos talking about like the types of physical witchcraft that we can do. So that's what I want to talk about today. Um, one of my first recommendations um, for especially anyone who like can't necessarily be super open about their practice or maybe isn't like quite comfortable doing a spell or setting up a whole big working and as a reminder like i do have 12 years <laughs> under my belt or about 12 years under my belt of practice um so like if you see me and are intimidated please do not be it's just that this is like very much central to my life and has been for a very long time um so no worries we all started somewhere um but if you can't necessarily do something like that um or a larger or more i don't know overt working um cooking stuff with strawberries um i'm personally going to be making kind of a shortcake pound cake type thing with strawberries and like whipped cream and stuff um so that's gonna be kind of just like a special dessert that I'm making um but if you find a way to use strawberries in your practice I very much recommend either just having some maybe just like specifically eating them to celebrate or just you know enjoying them and contemplating reflecting and doing any sort of like maybe a meditation uh, or just having a few moments to yourself might just that's perfectly fine if that's all you want to do for the full moon there's there's no like competition I promise um Next, I would recommend cleansing your space and maybe starting to prepare to celebrate the summer solstice if that is something that you are celebrating, uh, which will actually be the 21st. And so it's literally like a week after the full moon. Next, I recommend doing any sort of prosperity, abundance or fertility magic. Um, and I encourage you guys to think about the seeds like on a strawberry and the potential for their use in magic or spell work. So maybe drying some seeds, adding them to a spell jar, a spell pouch, using them to dress a candle, something like that. Um, other things that I always recommend during full moons are upping your protective magics. It's always just a good reminder to put out there. Protective magic is wonderful. Now, because of the sign and also the proximity to the summer solstice, I really feel like honoring solar deities or perhaps like engaging with the divine masculine is a really great thing to be doing during this moon. Um, moon, like full moons traditionally are a time where we celebrate the divine feminine. But um, if that is not part of your practice, you don't have to. But if you're trying to find, um, you know, the balance between it maybe honoring both the divine feminine and the divine masculine during this moon just to switch things up a little bit see if um you know any revelations come to you <laughs> Sagittarius being a fire sign any sort of fire magic is fantastic candle magic having a bonfire anything like that so I will probably be doing a lot of fire magic for myself I love candle magic I love fire magic ah, so good um if that is not quite your speed, if you're looking for something a little bit more low-key, maybe making sun tea um, or some sort of solar charged water um, instead of making moon water or making solar water during the day and moon water at night, whatever works the best for you, I will probably be doing both. You are working on any creative projects and are looking for a little bit of inspiration or a little bit of a spark to fuel that creative fire, um, doing any sort of like maybe inspiration or creativity spells, fantastic during this full moon. And if all of that seems like too much even just taking a second to like pause to celebrate the season and check in with yourself fantastic to do during a full moon and I highly encourage it to all practitioners that's my little spiel on the full strawberry moon I am so excited to be celebrating and I hope I see you guys over on patreon for our live ritual again that is happening at 8 p.m on June 14th 8 p.m eastern standard time um June 14th and I will always post the replay as soon as I can I'll see you guys then or I'll see you guys in the next one bye